Folks, we're back with part two of our American Milk Glass collection. If you thought you saw it all in the first one, or the old one, you didn't. But you can right now, right here on my take on Home and Garden. We got a wonderful part two of our American Milk Glass collection, guys. If you remember where we left off before, we talked a lot about Fenton and Westmoreland companies. Today, we're talking about them mostly again. And you're gonna see what kept them busy <laughs> and why others just tried the hardest to catch up and chase them down and be as popular as they were. So let's start off with Fenton again. And if you'd like to know where they were out of, you can see that in part one. And a bunch of the factories and companies. The first one we have today is this wedding present of my mother's that you know, I inherited, and that puts this right in the exact place before me, which is amazing. So, 1956, and it's lidded, candy dish, and it's just exquisite, guys. Now, when you pick this up, like I talked about before, you really got a hold of something because they didn't cheat back then. That you really got something beefy and heavy that could take a bump and a cleaning. So in the American hobnail, Fenton was king. And you're gonna see a lot of that in the smaller things today. Just precious as can be. Now, I'm going to remind you that you saw what I call the medium pair of candlesticks just so I can show you the smaller pair. Both by Fenton and this is the different lip and this is more of a contemporary lip here for the candle holders but you see the size difference so I just wanted you to see that these are a little more formal look and these are more garden or almost cottage look the way they talk today too cute in the American hobnail still in the American hobnail pattern real popular pattern Look at the oval in the sugar bowl, no lid, never had a lid, and the Kramer. And what I love about the Kramer is even the handle is hobnailed. <laughs> really cute. So the classic, if you see this a mile away, you know that cat head slipper is Fenton in the American Hobnail. How many colors have you seen? You've seen some of our other things and we're gonna redo some of them too. The Cat Head Slipper by Fenton. Probably 50s. Most of this that I'm pulling up here and I'll tell you if it changes. Now here is a cute bud vase, square bottom, they're getting a little more modern here, they're getting, you know, they're really reaching out. This I think is 60s now, and with the square base, the pedestal base, in the American Hobnail, and I'll tell you, those knobs are 
sticking out to them. They did not cheat. It's really pretty cool. Next, we got a little bell. It's Fenton in the American Hobnail. This, to me, it's probably a little newer, maybe just to 70. Then a classic little ball in an oblong form with the ruffled leaf design still in the American hobnail. No doubt about this one. Two handled and it's marked on the bottom. No mistake in that. So I'll tell you most of your uh, American hobnail is going to be Fenton if it's in a good milky white glass. That'll help you think. You'll see the phonies out there. If you put them next to them, they're real obvious. They're not as rich. They look diluted. And like I talked in the last one, that'll help you. Here's a little pitcher, your little breakfast pitcher with a crimped, ruffled lip, applied handle. Imagine applying that over the hobnail, bringing this around and pinching that on while it's hot. That's what they had to do. This is really cute. I love this size too. You know, we had a lot of bigger ones you saw in the last one, but the, again, we're on the smaller things. This is a smaller, ruffled, crimped lip bud vase. This, I'm telling you, I wish you could feel this. This weighs as much as a bag of sugar. It is that heavy and wonderful. Immediately, I know this is from the 50s because it's really substantial. Like, why don't they do that today, right? We, we don't get it today. <laughs> Just beautiful, folks, in the American hobnail. Then a ruffled bowl on a pedestal. You'll see mistakes, people calling this footed. It's not a foot, it's a pedestal. Something with feet, you know, stick out like this. That's feet footed, beautiful size, and the corrugated base and pedestal. Real cute size. This is big enough to put a frog and put your real flowers in. Yes, you girls that are asking for that, I'm still going to do it very, very soon for you with the live flowers. No time in this video, <laughs> believe me. Okay, that's just a beautiful piece. I'm sure you agree. The last piece, you may have seen this in a decor video, but we didn't get to pay attention to it like we should have. And it wasn't in with the big stuff because I just didn't have time. It's big. This is a big bell. I said the last thing, but it's the last too. Look at the size difference here. Both by Fenton. In fact, they're both marked on the bottom. But you get so you don't even have to look. Beautiful. Incredible tall vase. Certainly, I put this in the 60s. And I just want to show you something in a minute, but I, I want to show you this little one. They just kind of ended the top, pulled that out, and it's just as cute as can be for a single rose. There's room for a baby's breath, a little fern, and a rose. Super cute, guys. 
Now this piece is unique because there's a couple of different techniques here. All right, first of all, the size is fabulous. You can see that it's hobnail on a pedestal base. It's fluted pedestal. But when this was hot, okay, you can imagine, the maker had this upside down and this was probably this tall. Then he got a hold of it with a wedge inside and pulled this down. See how the hobnails stretched? <laughs> Cut that and snipped it off and pulled the one side down and feathered these sides out just a little bit. This would just about close up, but I think there's a piece cut off and then open the throat to give you this vase. I call this finish a drip, like a drip edge. See how it, if it was hanging like this hot and it's just almost flowing and then, you know, it cools and stops. Really awesome technique. You can find smaller ones like this with this same technique. Now you saw all of that together in the American Hobnail. And it's all by Fenton. So you can see they were busy with just one pattern. But they had other patterns and we'll see another one. But now we're going to switch over to Westmoreland glass company they had to do something for themselves and they weren't going to copy American Hobnail but they didn't have to if everybody that remembers this one is called paneled grape and this is the cutest little split handle basket you can see it just barely comes together in a neat little size. You could do all kinds of things with this. Have it on your dresser, hairpins, money, all kinds of things. Here is the cream and sugar. I barely touched on this in the old video before digitally remastered. <laughs> Too cute. The handles look like vines and sticks and the leaf is all, it's all about the leaves on here. Westmoreland, cream and sugar, no lid, never had a lid. A lot of your early stuff had one or the other. They had both. Okay. And of course your lidded things were more. Here's the last piece in the panel. Great. This is the picture. Now this thing, I'm not kidding. Look, look how it wants to. I'm going to pick this up. See how it wants to tip on its own. I'm not tipping it. This weighs as much as a bowling ball. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's so beefy and wonderful. Like I said, they really gave you something. Right away, 50s. I I'm, I'm just know it. Maybe 40s, late 40s. Okay? Just fantastic. If you're shopping and looking and you maybe you don't care about it, but you see one, pick it up. Just pick it up sometime and you'll be just impressed what they used to give you back in the day. All righty, this piece is just wonderful. You know, you got your favorites and you just love them. Next, we're still with Westmoreland and we're going to a different pattern. This one's called 
old quilt. Real popular. Late 40s, 50s, and probably into the 60s for this pattern. Don't quote me, but it's, I'm, I'm thinking it probably stretches about that far. This was my mother's too, another wedding present. So you know the date, 56, and it could have been made earlier. She could have even got it earlier. Lidded round butter dish. Look at the detail even on the bottom that you don't see. They cared about that back then too. <laughs> So, you know, butter used to come round, and I actually, there is some butter from the Amish that comes like that. It comes in a cylinder, and you could cut it in half and put half of that on here. Pretty, pretty cool. People, most people don't bother today for being that age. It's survived a lot of little brats running around in all this time. So it's really special. In the old quilt pattern. Now here's an old quilt again, sugar ball, corrugated lip. No lid. And unfortunately, I do not have the creamer to this, but I'm, I'm on the lookout for it because, you know, it's not a pair without it, but it's still wonderful. Very heavy, even the bottom has a pattern. And look at this wonderful, again, this is going back in the 50s, and it's a vinegar cruet, completely intact, nothing wrong. The bottom, you can see where they broke it off of the worker's stick in the old quilt by Westmoreland. Alrighty, now we got two goblets in the old quilt by Westmoreland. Even the bottom, there's a pattern. So, if you're storing these, which you know, you should upside down so they don't get dusty where you drink out of. You have something to see in the cabinet. It's, a, it's just as pretty, you see, put away. So I'm sure that's why there's, there's nothing here. Now, if you thought that was anything at all, here we go. Let's fill our goblets and have a toast. This pitcher weighs more than the last one. <laughs> In the old quilt, corrugated edge. Beautiful spout on this. Nothing wrong here. Fabulous, heavy, heavy piece. If you were in trouble, and you had this out on a picnic on your boat, this could be the boat anchor. That's how beefy this is. <laughs> Just don't make them like that anymore. Now here we are with Fenton Company again, and this pattern was incredibly popular, and this is called Daisy and Button. And look at the little basket with a plied handle. These little marks on the handle tell who the worker was. He's got four marks on his, his calipers. And then the handle is slightly crimped around to be decorative. But the body of it, look at even the bottom, it's incredible that they would bother as your daisy and button 
pattern. There's only two pieces of this, <laughs> but you can find this easy. Here is a baby carriage that is in the daisy and button, the entire bottom. Look at, look at this. You don't get that today. That'd be blank in today's stuff. This is a nut dish, a candy dish, and it's just cute as heck. Look how thick. It's a half an inch thick, the whole thing. The wheels are a little less, but the body of the dish, <laughs> it's amazing and it's so darn cute. Again, back when they gave you something. Now we're coming up into early 60s. I remember this and I think it was a anniversary present of my mother's and it's Honeycomb and beehive. You see where they're getting real modern here now. It's square instead of round. It's on a pedestal that's square. Okay. And instead of being solid, it's like they're trying to save a little bit. The pedestal is slightly hollowed here. Okay. That was all Fenton, the bee hive, and the uh, daisy and button. So if you see daisy and button, it's by Fenton. Unless it's faked out by somebody else, as far as I know. I think they stuck to their patterns. Okay, so you remember when we talked about Westmoreland and they develop their own hobnail and this is one of my favorite patterns going on. This is theirs. It's English hobnail and it's more diamond cut and it's just gorgeous versus the American hobnail. Okay, you can see the difference. And this took off like a rocket and they did everything. Now here again, applied handle. There's no real marks on it. And the bottom again has a pattern. Now we've got another maker here. You might have seen these. They did some custard bowls like this too in the acanthus leaf design i saw somebody called this cabbage leaf in on their website and for sale i had a fit but anyway i doubt very much if that's a cabbage leaf but this is the pattern and theirs was a custard bowl. They didn't have the candle fitting for the, in the center, see, for a candle. These are candle holders by Indiana Glass Company in the acanthus leaf pattern. If it's called a different leaf, let the glass gods come tell me, because <laughs> that's not a cabbage leaf. All righty. Now we have four oddities, I call them, only because I haven't found the maker yet. And you've seen them around, probably. You can find them. I know there's two that I can find. If I had a minute, I could find them. But here is a cradle that looks like it's made out of wood slats. <laughs> it could be, it's funny, it's, it's slightly 
you know, the rocker's round on one, but not on the other. It actually has a little foot so that it doesn't rock. The, and that's a cute thing. So it's a candy dish, a nut dish, and you've seen these around. It's unmarked, but I know you can find this and look it up. It's not hard. Alrighty, back to this picture. It's almost an imperial look. It's quite intricate beading. And I just haven't found this manufacturer yet. Again, it's cool that it's done on the bottom, like I've been saying. So it puts it in the period of where they gave a darn about doing that, which is just amazing. Real cute piece. Leave me a comment if you know that pattern or the maker before I find it. Here's another one. Now this looks like the other little basket. This has got a unique starburst. It looks like Daisy and Button and I actually saw it on somebody's site calling it Daisy and Button and it's not. Okay, I'm sorry some of you sellers out there that don't bother. I think this is Fenton but I just don't know the name for the video today. So I don't pretend that I know. Alrighty, here's another cutie. Now in the last video, I had a piece with a lid that in the first older video, I didn't know the name and then I found the name. This is real close. <laughs> I don't think it's the same. So I'm not gonna call it what I called the lidded piece because again it's not exact and this resembles button without the daisies but it's a unique piece very thick real cute again the pattern is on the bottom even though you don't see it it's wonderful real cute creamer for your morning breakfast or coffee so folks, if you liked our American Milk Glass Collection video today, give us a like, a share, a comment. Send your buddies over. We'll take care of them and keep them happy. And keep on collecting. Now, we're gonna give a quick shout out to some of our friends. There's no denying Pat Godwin from North Carolina. Hello, Pat. Barb Peterson from Pittsburgh. Hello, Barb. She's been a something else <laughs> for quite a while on our channel. Very nice. Really cute. Jan Upzak. She has a sense of humor like mine. I hope that's a compliment, <laughs> Jan. <laughs> and Louis Morales. What a good guy. Just a super guy. Doesn't miss a show. Always bright and positive. And we just care so much about people like that. Thanks, everybody. Hey, we got a lot coming up. Right here. On my take. On Home and Garden. It's going to be fun. Take care. And we'll see you in the next Over the Top Collector video.